Hey everybody, it's Kojak. Thank you for checking out this video. There are a lot of fantastic weapons delivery tutorials on YouTube. Great content creators like Spudknocker, Sidekick, Red Kite, Casmo, 104th Maverick, The Grim Reapers, and a load of others put a lot of time into quality products that provide us with a spectrum of procedural guidance and techniques to help us get better at employing weapons on target. And I highly recommend checking them out and subscribing to them if you haven't already. What I haven't seen a lot of, especially with the F-4, and I love the F-4, is how to fly the aircraft. It's a challenging plane. It's big, it's heavy, and it's antiquated. It can also be difficult to land correctly. That is, on speed, the way it's meant to, in accordance with the flight manual. The F-4 doesn't have a flight path marker on the HUD like modern fighters do. However, by using the technique I'm demonstrating in this video, you'll be able to nail a 3 degree glide slope every single time, whether you're flying a visual straight in or making a base turn to final. I'm using helper gates on a 3 degree glide slope in this example because I needed a visual constant, and that's how I discovered this technique. When I'm on speed and the solid tone is playing, I'm at about 10 degrees of pitch. The aircraft at rest on the ground has about one degree of pitch, which is a nine degree pitch difference. I'm descending using a three degree glide slope, so my landing aim point is about nine plus three, 12 degrees below the bore line of the aircraft. While the F-4 doesn't have a flight path marker, it does have an adjustable HUD reticle measured in mils. Well, one mil is equal to about one twentieth of a degree, 0 0.05625 degrees to be exact. So 12 degrees is 213.3 mils. The data banner at the bottom of the screen has an AOA value that is not related to the aircraft AOA system, but it does show the relationship of the DCS modeled aircraft's pitch relative to its performance. After looking at the data of around 20 approaches like this, I settled on an average value of 12.6 degrees, which is 224 mils. Basically, any value between 220 and 230 mils is going to get you reasonably close to a three degree glide slope when you're on speed. So when you're doing your descent checklist, instead of going to standby or caged, put the reticle selector in air to ground and dial in 225. Then raise your seat all the way up to the stops. In real life flying, every time I taught a student to land, I would tell them that a good landing starts with a stable approach. On speed, on center line, on glide path, and trimmed to minimize stick inputs. If you can make that happen, you're 90% of the way to greasing it on. First, on speed. After you lower the gear and flaps, prioritize slowing to your approach speed. A quick reference, according to the flight manual, is to divide your fuel weight by 1,000 and double it then add that number to 143 to get an approximate approach speed. This doesn't take into account any stores, so if you're carrying ordnance, do the same equation and add that number on as well. In this example, I have 12,000 pounds of fuel and full gun ammo, so I'll add 24 knots for the fuel and two knots for the gun, using 169 knots as a reference. Second, on center line, probably the phrase I used the most instructing in the pattern was fight for that center line. If you're left or right, make a correction. Try to be as exacting as you can to make the runway a straight line extension out in front of you. Always fight for center line. Third, glide path. You need to pick an aim point and stick to it. It can be brick one, the numbers, or the captain's bars. Fighter standard is runway threshold. Heavy standard is the captain's bars, or you may have milsim squadron standards that dictate desired runway touchdown point. Whatever it is, put the reticle on it while you're on speed and you'll be good. Fourth and finally, trim. Trim always. Trim during the whole process of slowing down and getting on glide path. Then trim some more until you can let go of the stick and not feel like the aircraft is going to dive or zoom out of control. Pro tip, don't hold the trim switch, tap it. Several taps is better than holding the switch 
because you'll likely trim right past where you need the stab to be if you're holding it. I'm working on a trim technique video that will eventually get a link above. If you've done all this, you should be on a stable final, on speed, on center line, on glide path, and trimmed. Now all you need to do is land. When the runway threshold starts to go under the aircraft nose, gradually pull back to put the pipper on the far end of the runway and let the aircraft settle. One final note, I tested this 225 mil technique at various fuel loads and heavyweight weapon loadouts. It works. The only difference is that airspeed increases with gross weight. So the heavier you are, the faster you're going to be flying down final. And the aircraft is sluggish with a bunch of bombs hanging all over it. If you're coming into land heavy and with a bunch of bombs, fly the approach at 17 AOA. That's the first slow beeping audio cue. And use the top of the inner reticle circle for your aim point. I hope you will find this technique useful. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know below. Thank you for watching. Fly safe and have fun.